So a quick demonstration of an agent-based simulation library that I developed for Python, specifically for grid-based agent-based simulation modeling. Um, with this downloadable project that I made available on my blog, um, you will have access to some modules that will help with animation, um, will help with generating statistics, and for developing the simulation model itself. So. There's the animation module, there's the data module, the framework module, the stats module, and those modules you will use for setting up a simulation model, but also for storing the simulation results and for generating plots and animations from those results. There's also a configuration module where you will set the paths to the database where the simulation results are going to be stored. This has to be a SQLite um, database and you have to use the database template provided with the downloadable project um, and then you will also have to specify the path to the directories where you want the animations and the plots that you generate with the animation module and with the stats module to be stored and then there are some demo models here um, for example, there's a demand production model, there's a game of life model, a social segregation model, and a SEER model, as well as a word of mouth sales model. Let's look here at, for example, the word of mouth model. Um, so this would be an exemplary application consuming this library made available by the downloadable project. You can see here I'm importing the, the models that I talked about, the data, stats, um, framework and animation module as well as the config module that contains the relevant paths for the database and for where you want the results to be stored. And then I'm actually consuming here those modules. Yeah, so I'm using the, the data module to set up a database. This database will have a predefined template and um, then I'm generating my simulation environment using the framework module um, and this, frame, uh, this environment uh, that I'm basically setting up has a reference to the database where the results will be stored as well as uh, two parameters for defining the size of the grid that is used for simulating the uh, uh, for modeling this the, the, the simulation model. So this would be the amount of rows and columns of the grid that describes the environment on which the simulation takes place. Then you have some additional parameters um, that describe the type of neighborhood functions that will be used throughout the simulation when calculating neighborhoods and average values throughout neighborhoods and so on. So this is documented in detail in the downloadable project itself. Um, here you have a go back to the, to the model. we have a docs folder here where the various modules are documented uh, in detail. So if there's anything that you want to check up on with regards to the framework and how to consume it in your simulation model, you can take a look here. Let's go back to the demo. So the demo I've opened here is the word of mouth demo model. And um, here's where I set up the environment and the database. And then you can see I'm adding a population to this grid-based simulation model. This is done with the populations class that comes along with the framework. And here I can provide any types of attributes that I want my agents that are part of this population group to, to have. So for example, here I call the attribute purchased that describes whether an agent pur purchased a product or not. And then I have to also um, provide a list of data types for each of the attributes. And these data types and attributes have to be consistent. And this is for the SQLite 3 database, um, so that we know which type of column we need to, to generate in the, the database itself for storing the simulation results. Then I'm defining some additional parameters that will be important for my simulation and that are not part of the framework. You can see I'm generating a simulation and this simulation will, um, yeah, it's a basic a class which is handling simulation runs. It knows whether the simulation is still running, it knows for how long you want the simulation to be running and it, it automatically increments the iteration of the simulation run. So this is just a helper class for tracking progress of the simulation. And then I'm initializing the database by writing the current populations that are generated to the database. And this is basically, basically an in the, 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 the initial step of setting up the database uh, with the first iteration, which would be iteration zero. 
and then I, in this model, we are we are modeling sales and how sales spreads by word of mouth. So we have to we need to have some early adopters in our sales environment, and those will be potential customers that already purchased the product. So, so actual customers. And what will happen now is that um, we are taking a, a random um, subset of uh, the the customer population that we added to our grid-based simulation model and we're setting their purchase parameter to one. So this is a, a method provided by the agent itself, which is part of the uh, populations class. What will happen now is we implemented the simulation runs itself. So here you can see this is basically for handling the simulation iteration. This uh, run method knows what iteration we're currently in and whether we reach the end of the simulation or not. Um, if, and I use this wrapper class or helper class for managing the simulation run. And then what I'm doing here is I'm randomly selecting um, agents and I'm conducting some calculations for each simulation run. Basically what I'm doing here is I'm looking at how many agents in the relevant neighborhood of that agent. So, so how many neighboring agents in the relevant neighborhood of any given agent already purchased and recommend the product? And if that ratio is big enough, the respective agent will also purchase the product. But if the ratio is not big enough, the agent um, will basically not purchase the product. That's what's going on here. Um, as you can see, I'm using a, a method provided by Frame for obtaining the Moore neighborhood in this case. And there's also a, a radius that describes how big this neighborhood is. So we're iterating here over uh, all the agents in random order, and we're looking at their neighborhoods and calculating whether this agent will, based on the neighborhood, um, have enough recommendations that will basically convince this agent of purchasing the product or not. And this is the underlying word of mouth mechanism that we're modeling here. And then we're simply writing each iteration into the database. And once we iterated through the simulation and we reached the end of the run, um, the simulation uh, length, we will um, use the, the data um, manager class that was also provided by one of the modules for obtaining the simulation results in a in the data frame and then we use those data frames to generate plots and um, generate an animation of the simulation run itself. In this, in this case the the plots I already kicked off the simulation so the way you would kick off the simulation would simply write Python and then the name of the model. And I already did that, it takes some time um, to execute the simulation and at the same time we're also rendering the animation. We can see now here in plots, let's look at the newest uh, plot generated. In this case, the word of mouth model only generates one plot. This is this average purchasing share. So we're tracking the purchasing share throughout the simulation run. So how, ma how many of the potential customers in the population purchase the product throughout time based on the parameters of the simulation? So let's look at the results here. Uh, so we have some sort of an S-curve here throughout the simulation. And uh, we can see the last customer or potential customer was converted into a customer at around um, simulation iteration 60. You could now adjust the parameters and you can see whether the um, S-curve becomes more steep or whether the S-curve flattens out um, before you reach 100% penetration. And um, yeah, like I said, this is just a demo model. So you could do whatever you want uh, with the framework. This is just one exemplary uh, application. Let's also look at the animation. Um, so the there with associated uh, animation would be the purchasing animation. So this is this animation here. There you can see uh, just a spatial animation of how sales spread in this grid-based model. So this animates basically the model itself and gives you an idea of how the 
model is built conceptually. Yeah. You can see throughout time how more and more potential customers are turned into actual customers based on this word of mouth effect. There's some other animations here for all of the other example models. So like I said, if we look at the demo models, <coughs> there's for example also a, a SEER model that models how uh, a virus this disease uh, spreads in the population. The animations there are also some, some some animations related to those demo models. So for example, here you can see animation of Affected agents throughout time. Uh, here, an animation of the recovered agents throughout time. We have here also let's see, social segregation animation. It's more like a type of simulation mode that you lose, use for trying to detect whether certain parameters can explain cluster formation, for example, uh, social clusters, but could be all types of so, uh, clusters. And um, if you look at some of the example plots here, um, created by some of the other demo models. Um, yeah, this would be, for example, from a from the SEER model. Um, the share of infected and recovered agents throughout simulation. And also here you could run the simulation with certain parameters and then um, evaluate the, the shape and, and, and the shape of these infection and, uh, and resistant curves or recovery curves. Um, agents based on those results. Let's see there's some other examples here. Um, These are some snapshots from the social segregation models. Um, just trying to run with different parameters to see the actual cluster formation at the end. And um, yeah, so there are some. Um, I think these were the best examples I had here from the demo models. Um, and yeah, you can basically use this framework um, in whatever way you want. The important thing is that it is. Uh, a grid-based, agent-based simulation model. Um, so it captures agent-based simulations where agents have attributes and agents can interact. The type of interaction you have to control yourself in your model implementation. So you can see here, for example, in this word-of-mouth model implementation, I'm controlling here the way agents interact with each other. In this case, the interaction was that each agent looked at the respective neighborhood and then evaluates whether he or she should buy the product or not. Um, so these type of interactions you have to implement in your application model uh, yourself. But you can use the framework for handling the grid of agents yourself, for setting the parameters and for connecting that with a database so that you can automatically generate animations and plots uh, without having to do any, um, any detailed coding with that regard. You just have to set the parameters. Um, yeah, okay, that was it. Uh, quick demo and I hope you enjoyed it.